Slide 1. Hello. My name is Bernard Liu. My presentation is about destination economics in AA globalized world. Where easy access to information spans the geographical divide. Hence the title, Flat World Destination Economic, Visitor Rules and Emergent Competitiveness. The discussion starts by considering policy challenges, followed by a rethinking of the economics of destinations. Along the way I present a set of stylized facts that are rudimentary to a flat world destination economics. The presentation ends by operationalizing these stylized facts through a simulation methodology that is built around contagions. Slide 2. Formulating policies that strike a balance between planning and expectations requires the design of an adaptive mechanism. Traditionally planning has been a product of history, while expectations are thought of as building blocks of the future. In a world where information rules, planning ceases to be an outcome. Instead it becomes a response to expectations. Slide 3. The distinction between history and expectations as determinants of the eventual outcome is an important one. Both a world in which history matters and a world of self-fulfilling expectations are different from the standard competitive view of the world, but they are also significantly different from each other. Obviously, also, there must be some cases in which both are relevant. Yet in the recent theoretical literature models have tended to be structured in such a way that either history or expectations matter but not both. Slide 4. A history-oriented approach to urban destination planning can be summed up by the phrase, we provide, visitors come. An expectations-oriented approach to urban destination management can be summed up by the phrase, visitors tell us, we provide. Slide 5. The economics of tourism treats tourism as an applied field of economics. Whereas tourism economics is a field that that is more an outgrowth from tourism phenomena. The historical approach to planning is a legacy of applied thinking in economics. By contrast, the expectations approach, while not yet part of mainstream tourism economics, can be more readily admitted to it. Since tourism economics, as a discipline, advances by constructing economic theory from tourism phenomenon and not vice versa. Slide 6. Much of the historical approach is rooted in the structuralist and institutional notion of homogeneous supply elements. I call this old world economics, O. Oh. Traditionally O oh is the domain of policy makers, the shakers and movers of this world. Flat world destination economics, FDE, is rooted in constructivism and postmodern notions of co-evolutionary, co-creative tendencies of social agents. Traditionally FDE has been the domain of fuzzy, wishy-washy, philosopher types that the mainstream would rather not refer to as economists. Slide 7. O is motivated by the assumption of scarcity and presupposes that the economy is a closed system. Success is attained through reactive plans that are hatched in hindsight. The aim is to maximize scale economies. Global success is achieved by throwing your weight around and in the utilization of key resources to the attainment of specific goals. FDE is motivated by the assumption of abundance. The economy is treated as an open system. Success is attained through adaptations honed through foresight. The aim is to maximize scale economies. Global success is achieved by agilent use of resources to leverage on long-tail effects and to immunize against black swans. Slide 8. The stylized facts for FDE is a product of complex adaptive systems, CAS, thinking, applied to destinations. With emphasis on the complexity of destination and knowledge as a common denominator between visitors and destinations that regulates the degree of adaptiveness of the destination system. Slide 9. In recent years the study of complexity has turned up a number of surprising facts. One of them is commonly referred to as the degrees of separation. In a loosely coupled system the degree of separation may be small. Hence the proverbial six degrees of separation in such networks. In a more recent variant of this, that is applied to globalization, Thomas Friedman called this effect globalization 3.0 or flat world. One might argue that this is six degrees of separation taken to the nth degree. Slide 10. 
if complex systems can be boiled down to just a few essential nodes or elements. What would its fundamental fabric consist of? And if we may ask the same question of complex adaptive destinations, what are the ties that bind the destination system? I venture to say that knowledge is the fundamental component. Knowledge that is encoded into the system in the form of rules. So while we may choose to describe the structure of destinations as complex, we can also explain its origins through rules and their changes. Slide 11. We have dealt so far with two essential elements in globalization 3.0 and FDE. The weightless element of information and the borderless element of degrees of separation. The third element of interconnectedness is the missing link that ties the explanation, rules, to the description, complexity. In a sense it is a yardstick of a complex system's success. There are two aspects to this interconnectedness. The first is a destination's spatial form in terms of the dispersal and distribution of economic elements. Agglomeration is one manifestation of this. The other aspect of interconnectedness is the social, qualitative elements of such economic distribution. Typically the heterogeneity of its economic agents. Slide 12. Christopher Alexander pointed out that spatial configurations offer us insights into the knowledge creating process. For instance, agglomerations seem to set the stage of competitiveness and growth in economic regions of the world. There are production spaces that enables places of consumption. Propositions 1, tourism spaces are a manifestation of the geometry of knowledge, Alexander, 2002-2005. Slide 13. Moving away from a pure architectural urban design perspective to space, to an economic analysis of space, Attention should be focused on density and diversity of economic activity. What the economic nomenclature will refer to as economies of scale and scope. Effectively this is a fusion between the old thinking characterized by O and the new thinking characterized by FDE. So in saying that both size and variety matters, it become evident that both history and expectation matters in the emergent competitiveness of a destination. This conjecture harks back to the statement made by Krugman in slide 3 in which he noted the distinct lack of economic models that incorporate elements of both history and expectations. In a sense you can't have the breadth of variety that is needed to cater to heterogeneous demand if there is no depth of supply concentrated in one geographical locale such as that within a city's limit or as part of a polycentric system. Furthermore if the concentration of economic activity is too specialized the destination dies. Whereas if the breadth of variety resembles the sprawl that we see in flatland cities such as Los Angeles, the economic benefits that accrue to agglomeration will often be elusive and the challenge is to concentrate activities into hot spots. Following from the history expectation conjecture, if history has determined a region's success thus far, it may still fail in a world that is increasingly being flattened by information ubiquity. Conversely, failing to consider history and path dependencies, many a cloned theme park have met their death in a region too alien from their native geography. Proposition 2 A. Complex spatial analysis of destination competitiveness requires, at its core, an economic consideration of the density and diversity of space. Slide 14 in Proposition 1, I argued for physical space to be made endogenous in our FDE model. In Proposition 2, I argued for physical space to be considered as part of the economic dialectics between history and expectations. In this third and last proposition, I argue that the struggle between path dependencies and self-organization in a destination's complexity trajectory is part of the co-evolutionary dynamics of interconnectedness and is at the core of globalization 3.0 and FDE. Policy-wise, the kind of complexity that should be targeted is one that is imbued with a creative destructive flevo, a complexity that ultimately enhances regional resilience. Therefore we must not plan the life out of a place. Slide 15. In fiscal and monetary analyses, one comes across phrases such as animal spirits, and crowding out referring to irrational exuberance and dampening effects. In the advent of a financial meltdown we try to stem the financial contagion. In political economy, we hear of the sick man of Europe. 
Obviously contagion modeling has a long tradition in economic analyses. Its use is not confined to the analyses of negative shocks even though the general public associates it with finance and mass delusions. To capture the essence of FDE within an operational model, I have chosen a contagion model that takes its inspiration from viral epidemiology. This is partly motivated by existing work on computational virology based on, susceptible, infected, removed, SIR models. Slide 16. The beauty of the simulation approach to FDE is its ability to directly model the rule encoding process and the transfer of information through the idea of virulence and distance effects. Behavioral finance refers to such dynamics as information cascades. The host and carriers being economic agents and institutions. Somewhere along the cycle of contagion the distinction between carrier and host becomes blurred as the DNA of the virus becomes enmeshed with the DNA of its host carrier. The crux of the analysis is therefore on the emergent DNA structure of destinations. Infection becomes a function of both immunity, history, and susceptibility, expectations. Slide 17. A destination can be infected by two types of tourist personalities after which there may be an infestation that needs to be controlled. The idea of tourist types driving the evolution of a destination and vice versa is due to Charles Plogg. You have the allocentrics on one end of the spectrum of visitors and the psychocentrics at the other end. The allocentrics are path breakers and explorers in that they seek out new places to visit that the general public have yet to take notice of. The psychocentric love to live in a tourist bubble where the convenience of home is always within reach if needed. Most destinations are discovered by the allocentrics and thereafter we may have an infestation of psychocentrics that is typical of tourist hotspots. In a sense a destination is susceptible when it is visited by the first trickle of allocentrics. It becomes infected when the large percentage of its visitors are psychocentrics. It is immune when it retains its character despite the influx of tourist. Tourists comply with its demands rather than the other way around. Destinations are removed when they are off the well-beaten path or were once a thriving destination but have since settled down into a quiet and anonymous existence. Slide 18. In the simulation model, we use cellular automatons to represent visitors and the space they occupy. The color of each cell within a cellular automata CA, model reveals its status in relation to the stages, susceptible, infected, removed. So that while the geometry of the cellular automata may inform us about the destination's structure, the color of the cells embedded within a spatial pattern tell us about the qualitative nature of the destination complexity. How each cell within the CA transitions between the stages is governed by rules given in the spread function which essentially is the generative mechanism of the simulation model. The key parameters of the model that the spread function operates on are, the size of the population, tourists and non-tourists, the initial tourist density of the destination, the history of the place, the configuration of the neighborhood cells for the spread of tourism interests, expectations, and the number of iterations in the simulation.